And I'm happy to say Ryan's created a community that's become incredibly cathartic for tons of people. And these days, that's hard to come by. Ryan joins me now to talk about it. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks. Well, it's nice to meet you. Where are you right now? I'm in the desert about two hours east of Los Angeles. It looks peaceful. Uh, I, there's no place I'd rather be right now. And this chaos, it's in the middle of nature. And yeah, I'm, I'm so fortunate. Yes. So let's talk about Sweatfest. You started this when the okay. pandemic first kind of came about. What, what inspired it? Well, uh, I was in New York working on a project. It got shut down, came to LA, came out here to isolate, and I was missing my dance community. Uh, and I wanted to move, I wanted to dance, I wanted to kind of process this chaos as I, I know how to do, and that's through movement. Um, and I thought, if I need this, I imagine that other people are gonna need this as well. And that kind of triggered um, kind of like the, the syllabus of what this class is, is, you know, it's a accessible class. So I kind of just like simplified what I normally do in class and um, in hopes that, you know, kind of that everybody would be able to participate and, and join in on the fun and kind of forget for at least an hour a day of, you know, what's going on right now. So is, is there, um, is there, is there a type of person who's tuning in? Where are people tuning in from for this? Well, yeah, that was the most surprising thing to me. I mean, every country I can even imagine um, I, was being represented. It was, people were just typing in where they're from. And, you know, the, the numbers of how many people, it was pretty shocking, but then the countries just made it more real. I just assumed it would be LA and New York, but it was, I mean, Russia and Poland and Venezuela and kind of the globe is taking dance class. It's it's incredible. Yeah, I've seen uh, like upwards of 6,000 people taking these dance classes. Is that a challenge? Like, because 6,000 people is 6,000 people of various abilities, various experience yeah. with dance, various fitness levels. Is, is that a challenge? No. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, uh, I wanted to cater to everyone. So the gestures, the dance moves are, you know, we're cleaning our houses, we're doing a happy hippie, we're doing, you know, a rainbow. These gestures that we, you know, have in our everyday lives. So I'm not teaching people technique. Right. I'm not using, you know, ballet French terms, uh, it's not the place for that. It's the place to inspire people to let go and have a great time. And, you know, half the time we're doing a dance party anyhow. So it's just mainly to engage people in a way that's like super positive and it's accessible and yeah, to be silly and ridiculous and be childlike. And so that's kind of like the instructions, you know, to it all. Do you ever get nervous knowing that 6,000 people are watching you? I get nervous all the time. I just like, I'm not a perfectionist, uh, but you know, like I edit the the playlist so it's perfectly, you know, with the crescendos, I'm the, kind of like a DJ and then I make sure that like, all oh, my camera's working. I get nervous almost every day. And I kind of love that. <laughs> you love that, it, it, it inspires you? It, it just humbles me. You know, I've been teaching for 20 years and I still get nervous and I like to, you know, really conduct, you know, class in a way that's professional and making sure that all my ducks are in a, in a row. And so, yeah, I, you know, every day something could go wrong and it goes wrong and it's fine. And but, um, yeah, I really, you know, strive to do my best. And so that keeps me a little nervous. You know, you're making um, a lot of people really happy, and I've seen I've seen like uh, your dances show up on my Instagram. You know, people doing the pretty pony and the happy hippie and sure. stuff like that. Not to put you on the spot, is there anything you can just show me really quickly? I mean, the happy hippie's a favorite, right? So you go one, two, double, one, two, double, one, one two, two, double, and one, two. two. So you got it. Is that right? Everyone can do that. Yes. Very, very good. My first time I danced since my grade 11 high school, so it's pretty good. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you get out of this? Uh, 
I mean, selfishly, you know, I get to work out. Um, and on a bigger level, I help people access happiness and try to find, you know, a little light in the darkness. And when people give me feedback and send me messages that are so damn heartfelt and honest, it like, um, it just kind of inspires me to keep going and keep doing this. And I feel like I didn't know, you know, I knew some people were going to take and then 500 and a thousand and just kept going. It's like, it's really shown me like what I'm kind of here for, especially during this time. Like I've taught all my life, but I don't know, this is special and I'm allowing and teaching the world to dance. And so, I mean, it, what I get out of it's immeasurable. Like it's, it's a really powerful, um, special exchange that I get with people all over the world. It's, it's incredible. Do you feel, I mean, I think it's, it's fair to say that we're all going to be changed sort of spiritually and emotionally after this, but do you think your work will change after doing this? Yeah, I do. I think, you know, with this class alone, I feel like it's going to change the way I teach and the way I do uh, my work in that way. And just because, you know, uh, the quarantine will hopefully be over at some point. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to teach. I'm going to do this class, which is like any other classes that I teach. I imagine for the rest of my life. So I feel like people need this, not only during this time, but people need to have fun, especially adults. We, you know, we put on these adult backpacks a lot and like carry a lot of responsibility and hardly ever do we put them down and like dance around, you know, sing into, you know, your lint roller and like it's important it's important that we do this and let's do it <laughs> forever you know at the at the end of these things there's there's a meditation and i know people have told me that the meditation at the end is what brings them to tears like something just comes out in that moment hey yeah well i give people the opportunity to be responsible for like the light and the happiness that's created during class. And like, it's, it's alchemy. We start class in one way, uh, the way we hold ourselves physically, mentally. And then by the end, more than likely we're like changed humans. And I think it's important for people to hold on to that. I think a lot of times a dance class, like, okay, thank you. Bye. Da, da. But I take a moment, you know, make sure that people appreciate themselves for showing up to be willing to be happy and that's a lot. It's a lot for people to hold that they're actually the ones doing it. And we don't really do that a lot. So I think that's where the tears come. And it's probably tears of joy. It's just, you know, we're tapping in. We're tapping into, I think, like a spirituality. We're tapping into a positivity that we kind of like roll through on a day-to-day -day basis. And let's not let that go anymore, you know? Like, let's calculate and catch it. I wouldn't have thought of dance and meditation being linked. But then I thought more and more about it, and I thought, well, they both require presence. You know, when you're dancing, you're typically not thinking about what you got to do or what, what you did, because you got to do it. And it's the same thing for meditation. I call it a moving meditation. And, you know, I've experienced this since I was a child. It always, you know, I had some, like, harsher things happened to me in my life. And like, I would go to dance class. I go to dance class before school, after school on the weekends, and I would just forget about everything. And I still do. I still do to this day. Even like, you know, what's happening right now and the police brutality. And like today's session was based upon, you know, acknowledging what's going on. And, you know, I was political about it, but then like all, there's other songs where it's like, you put on an outfit and you dance your heart out, you know? and um, so to this day, I think it, it, it's a really great way to escape um, in a positive way. I, I, want to, I want people to take a listen to this. That is Lay Your Head on Me by Major Lazer and Marcus Mumford. The music video for that was filmed in isolation. You choreographed it. 209 dancers from 29 countries doing different parts of the same routine. Again, 
in isolation, how? <laughs> how how do yeah. you do that? Well, I mean, I'd like to say it's the future of like my work, but I've done it for many years actually. If I can't be present, you you know, for that specific video, I created a uh, movement that again would be accessible for so many different bodies and skill levels. And so I just recorded this video uh, in my bedroom, as we do, like an instructional video of you know the movements and the intention behind it. And for me, it's more about the spirit that comes through than the actual choreography. And I think that's kind of like how I, you know, my MO for my work. But um, yeah, so I just like, you know, try to get people to relate to the human spirit and what it's like to hug and touch and hold each other and support each other. And that's kind of like, that was like the, the, the go-to point for this project was just like to feel like we're being connected even though we're so far apart. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you said that's sort of the, uh, that's sort of the MO of your project or the MO of your work. I was curious about that going in because you know, I, I think about what we just talked about. So we talk about the dance class. Oh, it's not just a dance class. It's a way for people to escape. It's a way for people to deal with this pandemic. It's a way for people to have a release of the day. We talk about the major laser and Mumford, Marcus Mumford video. It's not just a video. It's a way of people feeling connected all around the world. And you know, and I look at the OA, which is like my favorite thing you've ever done. You choreograph that dance to help a woman get through a kidnapping. Or you know, in the Sia music video for Chandelier, it's a great dance, but it's about a young woman in a decaying home. There's something going on. It's not just about the movement. It's about resilience or something. It's about resilience. It's about giving the viewer access and kind of uh, exposing humanity through movement. Because again, like I've always been, you know, a people pleaser and. That's what I do with my work. I want people to feel something, and I, that is how I generate a lot of the movements that I do. I want people to be like, oh, that's a, that's a fork, and that's a cockroach. They can relate to it, because I think dance a lot of times can be um, elitist in a way, or you know, non-accessible, because it's so conceptual, or the art form itself is so specific in the movements and technique, and like, I love that too, but I also, want to open the door wider for the audience to understand and relate. And everyone can relate to human gestures or an emotion or a feeling. So I want to take people with me. I don't want to isolate people. And I feel like every, you know, every aspect of this exists in the dance spectrum, you know, the super conceptual and hard technique. And that's one thing. And I try to maybe be on the other opposite, you know, end of things and like really, really, really invite people to enjoy it and kind of simplify it and not dumb down by any means, but just really to like articulate movement in a way that it's accessible. Ryan, I don't think we as viewers of dance are given that opportunity enough. You know, I think about all the times I've watched dance and I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of conditioned to look at technique. Like I'm sort of conditioned to go like, oh my God, that's, look how long they've been standing up or look at point or look at how out of breath they must be or look how amazing it is that they can tap like this. I never really understood, and I, I feel a bit embarrassed to admit this to you, but I never really understood how much about the human expression I could get from movement, you know? Well, I think, you know, there's varying degrees of that when dance is created. I think a lot of it is to not look human, to look like a superhuman sport athlete, da, 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 you know, this thing, and I, which I love. I mean, even that's with Chandelier. It's like, you know, I was accessing Maddie's ability to flip and to turn and her leg going crazy. It's like, I love that because it's really impressive. And I love these other gestures that everyone knows. And then when this put in an abstract scene, and so it becomes this like art form that is, there's a lot of things that are accessible about it. And there's a lot of questions that are probably brought up about it. And I think that is what the success is, is that people are intrigued and they understand, they can understand the language, but then there's a lot also they have questions about. I think that's why they rewatched re it over and over and over. And, you know, it wasn't beating someone over the head with the concept. It's like kind of keeping it open so people can be part yeah. of that conversation and 
create themselves of what it means. And so it's not this specific thing, but it's, you know, it's a fantasy and people can play along, you know? Are you heartened then when people, because I, I remember after Chandelier came out, all I saw were like GIFs and, and videos and of, of people trying to do it, of people trying to do, to do that dance. Is that heartening for you? I love it. It's just, it's so special. I mean, kids are doing it. I mean, like, literally like porn stars are recreating it. It was just like, what is going on here? Like, <laughs> it, it was, and I'll, say, I'll take it all, you know, like, yes, 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 yes. And it's just, it, it, it's an honor, you know, people to like, you know, either make fun of your work or try it or like, it's just, it's a very special feeling, I gotta say. But before we go, and you've been amazing, I'm, if you could do me two favors. One, um, tell me, a story that you've heard from someone who's taken your class that's meant something to you? Well, recently, um, I'm getting emotional, but recently um, a nurse who, you know, has to work longer shifts and she couldn't take dance class. Um, she was in the front lines and she would put her phone in her pocket and put in earphones to get through her, um, her work and just like listen to, you know, me yapping and the music. And she's like, this is what's getting me through this, you know? And she's like helping people live. And she, you know, just by hearing it, she would look down every now and then in her pocket and say, just like, watch, watch it. And um, it just, it means so much, you know? It's tangible. Like we're all trying to help and it's tangible proof that something like that can help. You know, we may not be yeah. able to be in a hospital, we may not be able to be in a grocery store, but we can help, you know? Yeah. That's beautiful. And let's, let's do it, let's help, you know? Let's, let's, let's teach, let's inspire, let's, you know, there, there's light, there's light everywhere. We just have to find it and like, you know, share it with people. And that's what I say at the end of class, like all this light that we've created, like it's yours and you created it, but like share it. Call a friend, tell a friend, like, not just so like I get more likes, I don't give up, but like, let's, let's share the, the goodness, you know, that's, that, that is possible right now. And like, and it's possible, you know, it's a possible, yeah, tangible thing. So I'm, I hope you're proud yeah. of it. I am. It's, Thanks. I'm going to say favor two is I need, I want one more dance other than the happy hippie. <laughs> uh, what else is there? Uh, I mean, the rainbow's cute, right? You unleash your fingers, you just do a little rainbow over your head. Yes, yes, Like yes. that? <laughs> so you're dancing the rainbow the whole time. <laughs> you're a professional, look at that. Look at this, I'm, 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 I'm in, I'm in. Ryan, so nice to meet you. <laughs> you too, thanks so much for uh, having me.